Yo, what is good? It's the real Dr. Dre here, chilling in the back pasture at a Goat Spirit Homestead under one of my favorite uh, oak trees on the property. It's a really cool oak. Um, probably all backlit, all crazy and stuff, just because it's a really hard time to get lighting. But, you know, y'all probably ain't really looking looking at your boy <laughs> for obvious reasons but uh hope y'all had a good weekend are doing all right having a good time feeling nice i uh i did some cool stuff i took a bunch of big poison oak vines crazy huge poison oak vines off some trees i was dropping and got it on me somehow even with like a makeshift hazmat suit on but uh we got those suckers down and i learned how to um you know, ascend trees with a dual rope system and trim trees, which was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, check the photos, you know. But uh, anyways, today we're going to talk about gender and sexuality and, and South Park. And um, again, I think it's a really interesting, <laughs> really interesting uh, exploration of sexuality and gender um, through the perspective of, you know, two straight cis dudes you know, m mostly, um, and how they kind of handle those, those issues, right? And obviously we know um, it's, you know, not politically correct, um, so to speak. But if we look at chapter 16 that talks about sex and gender in South Park, this is from Blame Canada, um, you know, lower body stratum humor always embraces, you know, the butt, the butthole, um, you know, and all of the reproductive organs, you know, wieners and vaginas, um, you know, as really important symbols of transformation. I mean, you just think of, of, of that symbolically, what happens with all those um, things in the lower body stratum, you know, how they are really in life, birth, you know, um, <laughs> death you know in so many ways of you know what you eat and stuff but there's always a transformation it's always a portal so to so to speak um if you want to think about it like like that and the chapter really gets into like the exploration of you know sexuality on television and how it, for so long it was really uh, taboo you know um taboo subject matter it's only been as of recently i'm not talking like you know, this year, but I mean, you know, the last couple decades where television shows, mostly sitcoms, you know, explore sexuality, explore the body, you know, um, in ways that it was never subject matter er earlier on in, in television history. But, you know, based upon when this book was written, you know, uh, Leanne Cartman is kind of considered one of the most interesting sites of sexuality um, and, uh, gender performance, um, because, you know, up until this point, it's revealed that Leanne Cartman is a hermaphrodite, so she has a wiener and a vagina, um, and that she is Cartman's father. Um, you know, it's revealed later that it's actually Scott Tennerman, um, you know, his, his parents. So they're, you know, whatever part of the later narrative that we, that we get in episodes, uh, uh, I think that's two, 201. Um, anyways, um, but Leanne Cartman, you know, is, um, uh, is sexually promiscuous, you know, um, specifically in the earlier seasons. And so she becomes this really interesting site of, of, of gender performance and, um, you know, sexu sexuality within the confines of South Park. Obviously, we have Chef, who's very libidinous, um, very sexual, seduces women with his songs, um, and, you know, including Leanne. But I think, you know, there's some things to, you know, kind of think about. And, I mean, South Park has explored sexuality in so, so many ways. Um, you know, um, the use of pornography, um, masturbation, um, you know, Butters exploring Paris Hilton. I mean, the dirty little horror playset, all of that stuff. Um, uh, you know, Kenny trying to get a BJ 
at the Jonas Brothers concert, you know, all that stuff. So they really kind of go into like all, I mean, if you really look at those, I mean, we're looking at, you know, uh, marital sex and relationships and the, you know, the assistance through porn. Um, we're looking at, you know, uh, Randy Marsh and, you know, not masturbating, um, and then masturbation itself and sort of that repression of that. We look at uh, youthful sexuality, um, exploration, etc. So it really kind of gets into so many nooks and crannies um, of, of sexuality. Um, and not only, um, you know, heterosexuality, but, you know, also queer, queer perspectives and, queer, and queerness. Now, in a very South Park way, obviously, but... Um, I think the interesting thing too, and this is just incredibly, you know, interesting for a television show. And this is a quote: "Many of the South Park episodes display that in male sexuality is the possibility that all men have homosexual thoughts." There's a great scene with Gerald and and uh, Randy in a hot tub together, where they kind of talk about exploring other men, and you know, it's thought that you know. Um, Jimbo and Ned, you know, um, have a relationship beyond that. And then obviously, um, you know, with the priest, uh, Father Maxi, etc. So they do explore um, that in, in some ways how, you know, um, everybody's a little gay, I guess is kind of what they say in some ways. But South Park has, I mean, literally from very early on, um, explored you know queerness um, and LGBTQIA issues um, in a very South Park sort of way from things like uh, you know coming coming out um, gay marriage same-sex marriage um, sex sex changes um, gay adoption you know those are just some like some very serious topics that they've addressed in a very South Park park way and obviously always through like a male typically a cis male lens um but one of the overall themes of the episode is actually is is acceptance of of queerness um you know i mean think about the death camp of, camp of tolerance is really a message other than about political correctness uh, is a message about acceptance, you know, not tolerance, acceptance, you know, so, you know, you have all sorts of characters, you know, Saddam and Satan, uh, Big Gay Al, who's a very early character, um, Mr. and Mrs. Garrison, um, Mr. Slave, you know, etc. So, I mean, you really have... Um, a lot of stereotypes of gayness too and queerness that they that in sexuality that they also play with but a real important thing to think about is you know do they exploit these issues for jokes these characters you know these stereotype kind of characters um you know are they truly allies you know and that's something that i, I don't really know you know um but it's something to really is to really consider is is like okay you're presenting these issues but in what way and what is it for laughs are you just doing it for laughs is it for the lulls or is it to advocate actually on their behalf is it to actually be an advocate and an ally and that that that's that's a very personal thing for y'all you know to really think about is like well, you know, what are they doing? How do you feel about how they're doing it when it comes to, you know, identity politics like this? But South Park does really, really explore gender performance through Leanne Cartman, right? Who's a hermaphrodite who performs her, her gender as a, as, a, as a female. But then obviously, um, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Garrison uh, becomes... A huge site of exploration of how gender uh, is is an actual performance and how gender is a social construction and you see how um, 
Garrison, you know, is used as a sort of way of dismantling the construction of, of those roles um, and those stereotypes. Now, you may not necessarily agree with how they do that, but um, they do put they do put that to the test through 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 Mr. Garrison, who's also highly problematic as a character, highly ignorant, um, a bigot, uh, self-hating in many ways, homophobic in many other ways. Um, but anyways, uh, 